Welcome to OLEK TV News. I am Mariam Amina Abubakar and thanks for being with us. Now, the news headlines. Taraba rape elect my hunchy is dead. FG commenced payment of 40% salary rise arrears. Saudi announces first civilian evacuation from Sudan. Peter Obi sends important reminder to President Muhammad Buhari. Welcome back from the break and thanks for being with us. Now, the news in full. The House of Representatives member elect for Jalungo, Yoro Zinc, federal constituency in Turaba State, Ismail Mayhanchi is dead. Mayhanchi died in the early hours of Saturday after a brief illness. He won the election on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. A source in the family told newsmen that his remains will be laid to rest according to the Islamic rights. The federal government has commenced the payment of the 40% pay rise arrears for civil servants. A little news spoke to some federal civil servants on Saturday in Abuja. Many have verified receiving bank alerts of the three month arrears January to April 2023. A high-ranking civil servant who spoke to the Aluti News correspondent monitored by a reporter anonymously in Ilorin, the Quarry State Capital, noted that the arrears came in alongside the April 2023 salary. Another civil servant also affirmed the development in Ibadan that he received his April 2023 salary alongside his arrears. It was earlier reported that the regime of the President, Muhammad Buhari, Propose a 40% pay rise for workers to cushion the effect of the planned removal of fuel subsidies. The spokesperson for the Ministry of Labor, Employment and Productivity, Olajide Oshudan, who spoke to newsmen, noted that the rise will be applicable to all workers from level 1 to 17. Earlier in March, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ingige, disclosed that the federal government have approved a pay rise for civil servants in the country. He added that the pay rise had been included in the 2023 budget, stating that it will take effect from January 1st, 2023. Ngege described the pay rise as a peculiar allowance for civil servants in view of the current economic reality, and it is meant to help government workers to soften the effect of rising inflation, the rising cost of living, hikes in transportation fare, housing and electricity. And now over to Sudan. More than 150, including foreign diplomats and officials, rescued from battle Sketch Sudan arrived Saturday in Jeddah. The Saudi Foreign Ministry stated in the first announcement that evacuation of civilians since the war began. The evacuation was carried out by the Kingdom's naval forces with the support of other branches of the army. It announced the safe arrival of 91 Saudi citizens and around 66 nationals from 12 other countries, such as Kuwait, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Tunisia, Pakistan, India, Bulgaria, Bangladesh, and the Philippines, Canada, and Burkina Faso. Saudi Arabia works to provide all the essential needs of foreign nationals ahead of their departure to their respective countries. The statement added, Saudi state-run al kabariya television released several videos of warships approaching Jeddah port on Saturday. 
The evacuees were received by officials and soldiers who distributed sweets on the occasion of the Islamic Eid al-Fitr holiday, which marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Among those who arrived in Jeddah on Saturday was the crew of a Saudi passenger plane that was hit by gunfire while preparing to take off from Khartoum at the start of the war on April 15th. According to Al-Kabariya, the broadcaster said the evacuees were transported in a convoy of vehicles to Port Sudan from where they boarded ships to Jeddah. Earlier on Saturday, Sudan's army said its chief Abdel Fattah Abrahan had received calls from leaders of several countries to facilitate and guarantee safety for evacuating citizens and diplomatic missions. Adding that the United States, Britain, France, and China are planning to elite their nationals out of Khartoum using military jets. Clashes erupted on April 15 between forces loyal to Burhan and those of his deputy taunt rival Mohammed Hamdan Daglo, who commands the powerful paramilitary rapid support forces RSF. The former allies seized power in a 2021 coup, but later fell out in a bitter power struggle. The conflict, much of which has taken place in Khartoum, has left hundreds dead and thousands wounded. Heavy gunfire, loud explosions and fighter jets roared in many parts of the capital Saturday morning, according to witnesses. We will run up be going on a short break. We will be right back. Stay with us. and thanks for being with us now over to nigerian political arena peter obi the candidate of the labor party in the february 25th presidential election has reminded president muhammad buhari that one major responsibility he has to perform now is to rescue stranded nigerians in sudan about 4,000 Nigerians are reportedly stranded in the Northeast African country following the crisis that erupted between two different military forces. The fight in the country was between two factions of the military junta. One faction of the military was reportedly loyal to the army chief Abdel Fattah al burhan Another faction was said to be loyal to Mohammed Hamdan Daglo. The deputy of the army chief and commander of the paramilitary rapid support forces, RSF. Peter Obi said the federal government had earlier revealed the danger of evacuating the stranded Nigerians in Sudan because of the tense situation in the country. It, it went ahead to reveal that the stranded Nigerians will soon be evacuated after the constitution of a committee chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema. The Nigerian Police Force, NPF, has confirmed the receipt of the Independent National Electoral Commission INEX later to investigate Hudi Yunus Ari, the resident electoral commissioner, REC, in Adamawa State. The electoral body is asking the commission to investigate the REC over the role he played in the just-completed supplementary governorship election in the state. According to reports coming to us, the Forces Public Relations Officer, CSP, Olumuiwa Adejobi, confirmed the receipt of the letter in a statement. He added that the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has constituted an investigative team that will work with INEC to expedite the content of the letter. Baba then assured Nigerians and the international communities that the police will get 
to the root of the matter in the defense of democracy and fish out all the persons fingered in the matter. Hudi Nusa Ari declared the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, as the winner of the election, while the collation of the supplementary election was still ongoing. A move he did not have the constitutional right to make and was immediately reverted by INEC. Discussions are currently ongoing between Nigerian Content and Development Monitoring Board and the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Limited for the production of 1.2 million gas cylinders every year. According to Punch, the Executive Secretary of the Board, Simbi Wabote, Revealed this on the sideline of a media conference in Abuja announcing the 2023 Nigerian Oil and Gas Opportunity Fair. The early conference, which will hold in Bayelsa State and its themed the oil and gas industry, catalyst and fuel for the industrialization of Nigeria. According to Obote, the proposed 1.2 million gas cylinder production annually is the federal government's push towards achieving 70% local content in the oil and gas sector by 2027. Currently, Nigas has been able to achieve 50% local content and NCDMB and NLNG are currently partnering to grow it up to 70% in the area of local production of gas cylinders to curb importation. Although he did not mention how much fund has been set aside for the project, Wabote stressed that talks were being ramped up to begin the process as soon as possible. The executive secretary added that it was able to achieve 50% local content with the NLNG's Train 7 gas project, adding that the proposed Train 8 would be another avenue through which the country would reach 70% local participation. He, however, asserted that it was impossible for Nigerians to attain 100% local content as it would still have to depend on the rest of the world for technologies that could not be sourced in country. Obata said the boss goal is to use the NOGOF conference to promote, drive and showcase more business opportunities in the Nigerian oil and gas sector. He added that he believed this year's theme is important as it fills the need for industrialization and development of the Nigerian economy. Because in the past, virtually every project in the oil and gas sector was done outside the country. But as of today, they have been able to retain 54% of such projects in country in terms of value and monetary. According to him, this year's conference will include technical and opportunity sessions, networking and an award ceremony. We will right now be going on a short break. We will be right back. Stay with us. break and thanks for staying with us. Vice President Yemi Oshimbanju and other eminent Nigerians have showed encomium of Reverend Dr. Stephen Baba Panya, the president of Evangelical Church Winning All, Ekwa. They described him as a man with unique and unusual qualities which he used to better society. They spoke during the 60th anniversary Thanksgiving service of the Equa president, who is also the vice president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, on Saturday in Abuja. 
Nunn reports that the celebration also marked his 30th marriage anniversary and 26 years in ministry. Oshin Banjo described the celebrant as a true servant of God, a nation builder, and a friend to the oppressed. Oshin Banjo, who was represented by the villa chaplain Reverend Shei Malomo, stated that the Equa president's promotion in life was worthy of emulation. The vice president prayed to God to grant him long life and favor in all the great works he has been doing through the Church for Humanity and Nigeria. Also, Mr. Joseph Daramola, the Secretary General of Khan, who represented the association, described him as a man of goodwill. Reverend William Okoye, founder and general overseer of All Christians Fellowship Mission, Abuja, Nigeria, thanks Reverend Panya Baba for his show of kindness, unity, and love in the Christendom, describing him as a man of peace. Okoye encouraged him never to give up in spite of challenges in winning more souls to Christ. Also in his speech, the Esu Karo in Nasarawa State, Farm Luka Panya Baba also thanked God for the life of the celebrant. The former secretary to the government of the Federation and Senate President, I am pious Senator-elect Ned Nwanko and wife Regina Daniels, Senator Chris Adijege, Prof. Obiora Okonko and Chief Ima Omokwe Sunday paid a condolence visit to the Chief Whip of the Senate, Oji Uzokalu, over his wife's demise. The Whisperer had earlier reported that Senator Oji Uzokalu's first wife, Mrs. Ifioma Adakalu, earlier this month passed on peacefully at the age of 61. Following her death, Prominent Nigerians have continued to trunk the Abuja residence of the former Abbey State Governor. According to the whisperer, Bologna businessman Prince Arthur Eze had on Sunday paid a condolence visit to Senator Oju Uzakalu at his Aswa Villa home in Abuja to conduct him over the loss of his wife, Mrs. Ifioma Ada. Eze, who visited Kalu, was accompanied by other personalities to condole and also facilitate Kalu on his 63rd birthday, which was marked on Friday. But Kalu, who was a former governor of Abbey State and Arthur Eze, are in-laws to each other, as late Ada was the daughter of Arthur Eze's elder sister. Speaking to a gathering of friends and few guests, the Bologna philanthropist described the laws as shocking, enormous, and irreparable, adding that, however, no one can question the will of the Almighty God. He urged Kali's family to take solace in God, saying that the late Ifioma, who passed on in the United States, will be fondly remembered for her uprightness, virtuous, kind, and courageous nature, and strong belief in Jesus Christ. Responding on behalf of the family, Kalu thanked Eze for empathizing with his family in the moment of grief and for the role he played in ensuring that their wife and mother lived, stressing that they have accepted the occurrence as the will of God. And now over to Zamfra State. Troops of Operation Hadarin Daji on Saturday neutralized seven terrorists apprehended two others and destroyed several of their camps in Zurumi local government area of Zamfara State. The director of Defense Media Operation, Major General Musa Damadami, made this known in a statement on Sunday in Abuja. Damadami stated that the troops achieved the fate during an encounter with the bandits at Brinin's Aba, Sanu, Lamba, Gabas, Gidankaso, and Dumburum Forest in Zurmi local government area of the state. He said the troops recovered seven motorcycles, two empty AK-47 magazines, and one Bofeng radio. According to him, following the arrest of a terrorist informant on April 21st, troops caused a follow-up operation and arrested another two terrorists at Shinkafi town in Shinkafi local government area of the state. Items recovered from the suspect include one motorcycle and three mobile phones. The military high command complements troops of Operation Hadarin Daji and encourages the general public to help troops with credible and timely information on criminal activities.
And in Kano State, Governor Dr. Abdullahi Omar Ganduje has disclosed that his administration has pardoned 4,000 and 13 inmates in eight years across Kano Correctional Facilities. According to him, his government has also within eight years settled fines and compensation for the inmates to the sum of 4,949,000 naira. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Dr. Nasru Yusuf Gawuna, stated this while pardoning 43 inmates with various offenses serving jail terms during the occasion to commemorate the Eid El Fitr celebration at Gorenduzi custodial facility. While stressing that freedom is everything to human life, he called on the pardoned inmates to exhibit good character wherever they find themselves in the society. The controller of the correctional service in the state, Suleiman Muhammad Inwa, demonstrated that the gesture offered by the Kano state government of releasing inmates on payment of fine, compensation and pardon will assist in decongesting the facilities and ensure a peaceful atmosphere in the yard. He appealed to other states to emulate the gesture and also urged the beneficiaries to be good ambassadors of Nigerian Correctional Service by becoming law-abiding citizens through displaying good behavior. On his part, the chairman of the Council on the Prerogative of Mercy, Abdullah Higarbarano thanked the governor for exercising the power vested in him by the constitution to release the inmates to the recommendation of the Correctional Service Management and the Council. And this is all on the OLAK TV news today. But before we go, here is a recap of the major headlines. Taraba Rep elect My Hanchi is dead. FG commenced payment of 40% salary rise areas. Saudi announces first civilian evacuations from Sudan. Peter Obi sends important reminder to President Muhammad Buhari. Don't forget to follow us on our social media handle displayed on your TV screen for all your adverts, sponsorship and inquiries. I remain Mariam Aminu Abubakar and thanks for being with us. Stay safe.